Well, welcome back. Welcome back to the Extraordinary Drummer Show. As you know, I'm your host, Sharon Moore. You know, I always say today, 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 we got an extraordinary drummer on the show today. Oh, man, this guy. I always say he needs to, after the gig, he should go and apologize to the drum kit. <laughs> he should say, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry that I had to do that to you. <laughs> He's a drummer's drummer. Will you help me welcome today, Carrington Brown? Hey, Carrington. What up, everybody? Love, yo, love. Yo. Welcome to the Extraordinary Drummer Show. Man, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Did you say you in Paris right now? Yeah, I'm in Paris right now. We're uh, in the middle of our tour with Coldplay. This is like the second leg. So we're doing Europe, and then we're doing like a bunch of like festivals and stuff over here because... You know, this is probably like the first time in a while the world's been open back up for like festival season. So we're trying to partake in that while we do the tour, too. So it's dope. Her is so gifted, not only beautiful, but she's so gifted. Wow. Extremely, extremely. I saw her playing drums one time. She plays drums every night. She's like. <laughs> She's like coming at my neck. She's like, yo, give me them sticks. Let me take over, man. But that's what I love about her, man. Like, she's not just like playing to be, you know, like part of the show. It's not just part of the show. Like, if we're in the studio, if we're jamming, whatever we're doing, she's like a musician's musician from the keys to the guitar to the drums to percussion instruments, whatever. She wants to like rock with the best of them. She don't want to fake play. She want to play play. And that's dope. I love that. Let's go all the way back. Where are you originally from? I'm from Washington, D.C., super, super specifically um, PG County, Maryland, a suburb right outside of the city. You remember when you got your first drum kit? Um, yeah, I want to say I got my first drum kit when I was like uh, maybe two, two or three. I want to say like my uncle Thomas or my uncle Ronnie, my uncle Ronnie's like a pastor now. He was a, a, a drummer growing up. You know what I mean? So I used to always kind of like go to his house to play the drums or want to see him play, watch him play, do whatever he does. But I, I, I want to say like one of them set it up. You know what I'm saying? My dad is a bricklayer. He could build a house, couldn't build a drum set. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, we had to call like the, the mechanical cousins over and they'll, they'll build it up for me. So I want to say like two, Two years old, two or three, I got my first drum set and I was just making noise in the basement till I was moved out. <laughs> <laughs> Take me over to high school. What was the scene like in high school? I graduated from Suitland High School, which is an art school in Maryland, in um, Suitland, Maryland, Suitland High School. You know, go to go figure PG County. But, you know, again, that that nucleus right there, a lot of the people that to follow me through my life, you know what I mean? Whether they were vocal majors, band majors, singing majors, we kind of connected there and were able to grow musically and as people. I did the whole um, orchestral band thing. I was playing the timpanis a lot. I was playing snare drum and bass drum and xylophone and the bells and just pretty much got a wide range of like what the percussion world had to offer standalone and drum set. You know, but I think orchestra helped me a lot because I started to like independently respect what each actual piece of the drum set does by itself. Because when you got to go through a whole four or five movement piece playing bass drum, you start to see how important bass drum is alone. Or if you're just playing snare or if you're just playing the cymbals or if you're just playing all these parts, then when you get on the drums, you can start to kind of like treat the drums more like a symphony than just a, a bash fest you know what i mean you start to kind of like respect it like everything has its place like in an orchestra you have your low strings your high strings your oboes your, you know what i mean you have your woodwinds you have all those things working together so you can start to kind of look at the drums in that light i think that kind of like matured me a lot with drums and kind of showed that less is more because everything's independently working on its own so high school was important to me man it got to get me out of that space of just being so comfortable being the wild guy and I had to actually learn how to read music, learn how to 
transcribe music, learn how to, you know what I'm saying? Just really get into the crevices of like musicality a lot. So high school was super important. Shout out to Mr. Del Piano. That was my music teacher. I still keep in touch with him today. Every Grammys, every award show he's watching, he's checking us out. And, and I love it. I love him. And he was hard on me and it was, it was good. It was really good for me. Cause again, those lessons kind of stick with me through the rest of my life. Let's go to college. What was it like when you, you said Berkeley, what was it like when you knew you was going to Berkeley? There's a lot of talent there, man. Yeah. So, um, Berkeley is just like, you know, it's, it's dear to my heart, man. Like legit. I started Berkeley college of music. I started doing summer programs when I was in like the 11th grade. And by like my senior year, I um, knew I was going to go to Berkeley. I knew um, I was pretty much going to receive a full tuition scholarship to Berkeley. And that's just like a huge blessing because, you know, Without a flower scholarship, I don't even know if I would have been able to do that. So, again, I credit everything to, like, God and all of the people in my life who were just pushing me to to keep pursuing what I wanted. And somehow or another, everything's going to work out. But Berkeley, man, to this day, like, literally to this day, the people I met at Berkeley, I toured with, like, one of my best friends in the, in the whole world. He's not even a friend. He's, like, you know, legit an extension of me, my brother, my, you know. Keith and Foster, he's our bass player with her. We met when we were 15 years old. Like musically, we connected. Musically, we clicked, and, and we've been we've been rocking ever since. Harrington, let's do a little drum talk. Yeah. So drum talk. What is your approach to the drum kit? I try to really make sure I put a lot of thought into like the actual authenticity of what I'm playing, but also make sure it feels good and it's still me. So my approach is that, man. Have a musical IQ, but still be yourself and make sure it feels good. Because the drums, if they're not moving, we're not grooving. Period. That's it. That's it. If people are not shaking their butt, I'm doing something wrong. What endorsements are you using? What are you doing on uh, gear and whatnot? Um, I'm using uh, Evans drum heads. And it kind of vary which ones I use, kind of like depending on the kit I use. Right now, I'm using the black Onyx heads, the EMAC kick drum, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, I use Sabian cymbals. I use Promark sticks. I use, um, what else do I use? Roland electronics. Um, yeah, Yamaha drums. And I'm sure it's some stuff I don't want to admit. I don't want to leave nothing out, man. But, you know, that, for the most part, that's the drum gear. Let me get you down the road a little bit. I saw where you've done quite a bit of television work and award work. Tell me a little bit about that. And what's it like? Which, which award shows did you play? And what did it feel like? Um, you know, it's a, it's a huge blessing to say this, man. I've done probably every <laughs> award show, TV show that we, we got to offer. I don't think I've done what? The, uh, I don't know. I've done the Emmys. I've done the Oscars. I've done the Grammys uh, four or five, four, four times. Um, pretty much every TV show, Ellen, Jimmy Kimball, uh, Jimmy Fallon, uh, late night shows, the late, late show, Corden, Colbert um everything like we, we've literally done every tv show there is to do i'm on a tv show with my family on vh1 you can check it out with tiana taylor iman shumper uh my wife coco my baby you know you can you can check us out so I, i'm all over the tv world man i love it can't shout out everybody and not shout out bt you know bt giving all of us platforms for years man so big ups to them Carrington, we do a thing on the show we call Word of Advice, where I ask the drummers, I ask the guests if they will leave a parting word for the upcoming drummers, even the guys at the next level, but are that trying to get traction in this game, in this industry. Would you leave them a word of advice? Man, my word of advice for 
upcoming guys, guys that already came up, is um, to always, always, always remain humble because when the moment you take off the, uh, the glasses of humility, you put on the blinders of ego. And when you do that, you can't see to the left of you, the right of you, and you're going to miss something. You know, so I, I like to say as much as you can, as often as you can, try to remind yourself. I'm not saying don't celebrate yourself because we're doing great stuff and you should be celebrated. But stay humble, stay thankful, stay grateful. And I promise you that right there is going to be enough to to keep you vigilant enough to to know what's coming next and to be able to evolve to what's coming next. Because if you're not evolving, you're you're dying. You know, so so never get so caught up in the ego to the point where you you forget to grow, you forget to learn, you forget to listen. So just stay humble. Keep that spirit of humility on you at all times, because without it, you're going to miss something. You're going to mess up somewhere. And when you do, nobody's going to help you because you've been being a jerk the whole time. <laughs> so stay humble. No matter what happens for you, stay humble. Is somebody doing more than you and is somebody doing less than you? That there is enough to keep you humble. No matter where you are, there's somebody above you, somebody below you. So stay humble. I'm sure your people are proud of you, your family, your teacher. You mentioned to see you on the on the big rising 42 feet up in the air. What is that like? Are they are they saying things? Oh, man, my my parents, my church family, my siblings. My teachers, they're like my biggest fans, man, and, and, and my biggest supporters, and they always got my back. I say all the time, man, uh, my mom been cheering like I was doing the Grammy since I was doing, like, high school <laughs> stuff in the cafeteria, you know? So uh, they've always blindly just supported me and, and believed in me. So without them, I don't, I, I, not, I don't think I know. I wouldn't be where I am. And I know my parents, man, made countless sacrifices so that I could follow my dreams. You know, like even when I was like 16, I got asked to go on like a, a tour in Europe with a gospel choir. We just didn't have the money. But my church put up and like put up an offering and paid for me to go. Like They got my plane ticket. They got me some drumsticks. They got me everything I needed. And now I can't tell you how many times I've been to Germany, but I've never been back to Germany and not had like a serious moment of just like, man, I, I remember I couldn't even get here. Now I don't know when I'm coming home, you know? So I got to thank my core for that, man. My, my, my church is my family, you know, and my, my family obviously is my family and my siblings. They're, they're so proud of me, man, but they support me like this before anything was going on. So when the big stuff came, I think it was just like that sense of relief of like, we we knew, <laughs> we knew you, we were betting on, on you the right way. And no one ever told me, you know, go get a real job, go do this. They like, hey man, if this is what you want to do, we got you as as long, you know, as as God allows to have you. So they just, I, I'm, I'm nothing without them. I love my family so much, legit. And I'm the baby. I'm the youngest of four, I'm the baby. So, you know, I, I had all the big brothers and sisters. They they always got me, you know, like he can drum all day because we're going to go to work. You just keep drumming. You keep practicing. You move to Boston. You go do that. Yeah, man. So my family, man, I, I, I'd be nothing without that, man. Legit nothing. I can hear that humility in you. Humility in you. I can hear it. And I had wrote something here. Man of God, he's blessed. God is just, boy, come oh, on. Man, I, I can't take no credit for nothing. <laughs> God been blessing me since since before I knew what was which way was up. And, and I stand on that, man. Like a lot of people ask, you know, how did y'all get here? How did you do this? And, you know, you hear people say, well, you just got to do this. And I followed this. And I, man, and there's no map to where you want to go. You know what I mean? And, and you just, but there's also a, a second part to that. And if you don't know where you want to go, any road will lead you there. But I know for a fact that knowing where I wanted to go and trusting God, he always made a way for me to get to the next level, get to where I wanted to go, do what I needed to do. So there's no way in the world I could write God out of my story. It doesn't exist without him. It, it's impossible. You and these isms, boy, I tell you. 
Your name should man, be. Man, I'm not. That was I wasn't even trying to have an ism. I just <laughs> that's just real, man. Like <laughs> just had to have a real each each second. I try to be as honest as I can. Like to sit here and try to take credit and say, hey, I just follow ABC and that's how it happened. It'd be a lie, you know. So I, I can't do that. Carrington, God has got some stuff for you. Eyes ain't seen, ears ain't heard. <laughs> and I, I receive it. I receive that completely. <laughs> I, hear I completely it. receive that. Let me ask you this one in closing. Carrington, what do you want your legacy to be, to be said, to be told? Um, I want my legacy to be leading um, through service, you know. Because um, I think servant leadership, and that's a that's a, a, a concept I picked up from one of my big brothers, Kenny Hampton. He has a great book, a great book called The Underdog Mentality. And it, it just kind of really speaks to this, this narrative of we're leading through service. You know, like the best way I can lead anybody is to be of service to them and show them the right way to do things. But sometimes you got to lead from the back, you know, a true wolf. He leads his pack from the back. So I want my legacy to be that I kind of like never mind picking up the rear, you know, like because I also manage artists. I'm a producer. I have uh, a ton of music business things going on, a ton of things in the in the actual space of live music going on. But in all of those spaces, man, I'd like to think that. Everybody knows there's nothing I won't do. There's nothing I don't mind doing. The ego's out the door. Like, where are we trying to go? And if I could leave a legacy of that, a legacy of leading from the back, a legacy of servant leadership, a legacy of he'll grab the bags and do the drum solo and then, you know, clean off the stage. Now, granted, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to. As you grow, you shouldn't have to do those things. But at the end of the day, the fact that you're willing to do them shows so much to the people who you're trying to impact. You know what I mean? It helps us really embody that holistic leadership, that holistic collective thinking that, yo, one for all, all for one. So if I can do anything with my legacy, it's to just show guys that, you know, there's no big eyes, no little use. It's just us. It's just us. Servant leadership, man. I want to leave that everywhere I go. I want you to know, even if I can close the deal, I can lock the doors at night, too. Because nobody's above that. None of us operate without each other, man. We're all the body. The toe can't give up because the foot ain't going to work. And if the foot don't work, the leg don't work. So you got to be comfortable to get in any of those positions, man. I would love my legacy to be, man, he didn't mind being the toe, you know, but he was the head. But he didn't mind being the toe. That's important. You sure you in your 30s and not in your 60s? <laughs> man, I'm 31, man. I just turned 31. I turned 31 over here. We had a festival that day. I worked on my birthday, which, you know, again, a sacrifice that a lot of young guys got to understand that you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices to be where you want to be and to do what you want to do, man. Like, you know, like live long enough to try to see your dreams start to haunt you. You know what I mean? Like I can remember begging to be on tour. And now I'm like, man, uh, when we going home, I got to get home, you know, but it's like, it's a huge blessing, you know, but at the end of the day, it's a burden at times, you know, it's tough, but that's why I really think that that's, that's super important to have that spirit of like service. Cause after a while, after you've done two, 300 shows, after you've done every TV show, after you've done every arena, you don't want to, that can't be your reason because you're going to fail. You're going you're gonna to give up. You're going to run out of steam. But if what we're trying to do here is push love and push a message of hope and peace and try to let the next people know that we're going to win, if that's our reason, then no matter how bad we want to go home, we're going to put on a good show. No matter how tired we are, we're going to put on a good show. That got to be your reason. That got to be what's pushing you. You know, It can't be those things. They're going to pass. It's somebody who's begging to go on tour. And then when you go on tour, it's going to be over. Then what you're going to do? You're going to be done with tour. You're going <laughs> to, or is it something bigger? So, you know, that's, that's my whole, my whole thing, man. We, we trying to push a real message here. And I really think her and Tiana, like these, these are artists that really mean so much to our culture as young, black, successful creatives, man. You got to be able to see Tiana 
have a TV show with her family and design clothes and be up under Kanye and then start shooting videos. You got to be able to see my wife go from being a dancer, choreographer to a film producer, video editor, treatment maker, day to day, just like superstar. You got to see me go from church to stadiums with Coldplay. You got to be able to see that. And it's not about me. It's so that y'all know, like y'all have to see it to believe it. So I'm just so grateful to be a part of something that impactful, you know, to our people, to our generation, our culture, the next you older than me, whatever. Let's be inspired to be in to be an inspiration is the highest. That's the highest thing you could do in life is to inspire someone. So that's the thing that pushes me. That's the thing that that at the end of the night that keep me going. Like, man, when we see those young dudes who are like, man. I really look up to you and I ain't never met you. That's why I got to go hard every day because there's some eyes watching that need to see this, you know, like that's very important, you know. Carrington, you give a whole new meaning to that Jabez prayer where they say, indeed. I'm serious, man. That's big. That's heavy. I'm, I'm glad to know you. You there with that, man. <laughs> If I wasn't, you inspired it, like you said, to be an inspirer, you definitely are, man. That that's a blessing, man. I I legit. That's it. You done made my you done made my night with that. <laughs> hey, let me say thank you so very much for being on the extraordinary drummer show. Thank you for having me, and thank you for being patient with me, y'all. I gave I, I gave him a hard time. I was hard to keep up with. I was running around left to right. But I thank you. I do thank you. And this platform is great. Thank you for including me, man. You done had some of my close friends on here. You done had some amazing drummers. So thank you for inviting me. Whoever's watching, thanks. And, you know, it's love. It's nothing but love, man. That's all we spread out. Will you help me wave goodbye to all the fans? Peace out, everybody. <laughs> thank you, brother. All right. Thank you so much, brother. For real, I had a great time. Great time.